more energy, more energy, oh, stop. more passion, All more passion. All right, Twitch, welcome back to round three <laughs> of the Modern Championship Series Qualifier here in Ankeny. Uh, I'm Blake, joined by Stefan here in the coverage booth. <laughs> As uh, always. So, if you didn't catch round two, it was a spicy one. We watched uh, Abzan Cauldron Company. You watched my brain melt out of my ears. Yeah, it was a wild game. Company gained infinite life, but Beans was not giving up, and they just kept trying to fight through it, and eventually uh, eventually got there. He, he he had an out. He had multiple outs to that infinite life, too. Yeah. He, if he had stabilized, he could have just held up position. Yeah, the heads-up play of sacking the, uh, <coughs> the ranger captain is, yeah. what, is what got there. In the end, so for round three... We've got two fan favorites at the top of your screen is Eric. So this is a wild deck. Uh, he's playing Big Red. Love it. So it's just, I, I'm not even going to describe it. It's an Urza Saga deck. It's so good. Um, it's the, a very Eric deck. At the, yes, it it's is. It's so good. And at the bottom of your screen, Joe playing Is It Lutri. You can see his Lutri companion revealed there. Not uh, serialized. It is. This is a Blood Moon deck. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, the wins that we've seen from him, he really locks his opponent down. But he has a lot of control pieces that are yeah. that are sort Removal, of like... Removal, yeah. counter magic, uh, blood moon. And we're starting off with the uh, Den of the Bug Bear. So that is going to be a... Is that Mishra's Research Desk? I think so, yeah. It's the Unearth one. Yeah, it's, it's a good Urza Saga target. From Joe, just going to be a land. Yeah. Pass back over to Eric here. Can we talk a little bit about Joe's history with this deck? Uh, Joe plays uh, Lutri in every format. Yep. Um, so, uh, well, well, with the exception of Commander, I suppose. Yeah. So, in Pioneer, he had Demir Lutri. Yep. Uh, in uh, Modern, obviously, it's Is It Lutri. Yep. Um, his, his Pioneer deck is all foiled, and so he has a serialized copy of Lutri. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the decks are gorgeous. Uh, it's his whole identity. <laughs> love, love the otter. So Mishra's research deck is going to get uh, sacrifice here. That's going to put an Urza Saga into exile. Yeah, he, he is committed to this deck, and the more he plays with it, the like it's weird to see how good he is with it too. Because like at first you're like, oh, is this sort of a meme deck? No, this man is genuinely talented with this deck. Yeah, hundred percent. He he's uh, fighting lions on a unicycle. It <laughs> With an otter. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, he's just very good with it. He knows what he's looking for. He knows how to, how to, um, what cards to spend resources on, mm -hmm. what not to. Is that a sea chrome coast? That is, is he, yeah. Does he have a pretty... white splash? Uh. Is this Jeskai Lutri? Is it? Hmm. <laughs> is it? Is it? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, it'd be cleansing this wildfire. This is a cleansing wildfire. It looks like it's going to take care of the steam vents, potentially. Yeah. So, if you've never seen this card, you, you probably haven't played Popper. This card destroys a target non-basic land, and then that player gets to search their library for a basic, put it into play, and then the caster draws a card. Yes. So, in this case, in, in Popper... Oh, Commandeer! Oh. Commandeer, you're cleansing wildfire? <laughs> Pitching, pitching a Chrome Host Seed Shark and a Force of Negation. So, <laughs> Joe will take this Cleansing Wildfire. Uh, Eric's Den of the Bugbear is going to go away. Joe gets to draw the card. Yep, and then Eric will get a search for a basic. <laughs> and so, the, the Well, I gotta say, I was not expecting a card yeah. here on a Cleansing Wildfire on the old bingo card today. Oh, no, that's here a, we are. That's a Flooded Strand. That's, he, he... Oh, okay. Okay. I was going to say, I yeah, thought it was just two-color yeah. Lutri. In Popper, what you do is you, you cast that card targeting your own indestructible, indestructible land. land. Yeah. And I don't know if Eric has any indestructible lands, but it wouldn't shock me. He does not. Okay. Because I could see him playing, like, a, a Dark Steel yep. Citadel. Yep, nope, he's not. He's just looking to point the Cleansing Wildfires at his opponent's uh, Triumphs and stuff, Got it. and stuff. Honestly, I like it. Like, especially against Beans, you're just going to you're gonna knock him out of basics real quick. Let's taking up this saga here. So, like you said, it is an Urza Saga deck. We actually saw quite a few targets for Urza Saga. We saw that yeah, spear. he has he has um, the spear. Uh, obviously, he's got Haywire Might as well, and then he's got four copies of Stone of Eric. Yeah, that <laughs> which is very funny. <laughs> that card's very good. Here's another copy of Cleansing Wildfire. Looks like that's gonna eat a spell pierce. So Eric will pay for the spell pierce. 
Steam Mids is going to go away. But he gets a basic, which Joe actually plays a decent number of. Basics. Yeah, it sounds so. basics. Lutri says you can only have one copy of each non-land mm. card. So blessings. You can Otherwise, you can play an actual mana base. In this that'd game. be a that'd be a real brutal uh, in in modern. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, Eric is wondering if we have deck lists available. I don't think we've posted we, anybody's nope. posted them just yet. Nope. We, the, we generally wait until top eight. The, yeah, the the deck lists don't go live until after the top eight is finished. Yeah. Just a you know we. It this is, not, is, comp- is not an open deck list. Right? Yeah, we're we're playing for an invite and and decent amount of money. Here is a preordain. pre-ordain. A newly unbanned and modern. We haven't yeah. seen a ton of this card since it's got unbanned. It, I think it has a good home here. Uh, in this deck, absolutely. Yeah. Um, most commonly, you see it in, in uh, the Murktide deck. Yeah, exactly. And um, uh, Murktide, not a super popular archetype here in Des Moines. Although very good. Like, I wouldn't be shocked to see something. And there's an expressive iteration. We only have one player that's dedicated to, to playing really? Murktide, so. It sort of, it has rises and falls. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty typical of a, you know, your 50, red, red your 50% deck. Yeah. It, but it reminds me of, like... Tron in that there's always going to be dedicated players. There's going to be people who jump on the bandwagon at like opportune times when it's sure. good, but there's dedicated players who are they just only play that. They only play it, yeah. yeah. Uh, looks like a Lorian Reveal is going to get exiled to this. Can't you can't cycle that out of exile? Expressive iteration here. So that's just yeah, it's just going to stay in exile. And we'll pass back over to Eric. Eric's going to untap. So this deck is called Big Red, which I assume... I wanted him to give it a funnier name than that, but he just said it's called Big Red. Yeah. Urza Saga, I'm going to make a Karnstruck token here. So it's, Eric will go searching. What are we getting? Haywire Might, maybe? Does he have a green splash in this deck? For yeah, he has Stomping Yep, he has Stomping, stomping Grounds. Grounds. Excellent. With the Haywire Might. It's just, uh, just going to give Shadows. Shadows that, it's such... Like, myself, I play an Urza Saga deck in Modern, you know this. Yep. Um... This is one of the best play patterns. Yep. Because you're just getting a 3-3 three, three with lifelink right. and trample. And, like, sometimes it's a 4-4. Four, four. And Here's another a saga. copy of yeah. Saga. In, in formats where you get to play multiple copies of this card, it gets absurd. Because you're just making tons of these, of these uh, constructs. Yep. And you're fetching out basically every utility card in the deck. And there's a lightning bolt. That's a flame slash. Flame slash is That's what I meant. Take care of the construct token. Four four damage sorcery. Yeah, we uh, is this going to be a oh it's going to be a murktide. murktide. Absolutely, this is a murktide. It's and a big and two. Come in as an eight eight. It's a big and holy cow! That's All as big right. as they get, boy. That's a win condition for you. Let's <clears> see if Eric can draw his way out of this. Uh, the red deck uh, <laughs> not super poised to deal with an eight power creature. Uh, eight toughness is really the issue here. Or sorry, eight toughness. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, looks like Bone Stomping Crusher in. Giant going to get pointed at face. So Joe will go down to 15, and then Eric will untap. Urza Saga going to go up to Chapter 2 here. Oof. Kind of kind of in a rough position. Oh, he does have a forest. There is green. So he does have basic forests as well. It would appear so. Huh. I wonder if those cleansing wild fires also help him get out from underneath his own blood moons. If he like, if he needs green mana, hmm. maybe the only thing, the only green card in there is haywire might. Oh well, there's the only green card. Fair enough. Eric in the tank here. Look Unless at him, he, touching uh, his temples. I do have his deck list because he sent it to me earlier this week. Unsurprised. Uh, let me see. Let's go back and take a look. He's a, he's a red player at heart. Yeah. Um, uh, something that Eric and I have common is that we both think that red is the best color. <laughs> <coughs> it's it is one of the most versatile. I'll say that. Yeah. The only the only green card in here is Haywire Might. Yeah. And there is only one copy. Interesting. So he just he's is that a flame slash he's looking at? Is he just examining it? There, uh, I believe he uh, popped the uh, Mistress research, re- research Desk. Oh, and that's his own Flame Slash. Yes, I believe so. Where do these Flame Slashes come from? Uh, that's an FNM promo. When? I, where am I, how am I missing these? Uh, that one was from over the summer. Oh, okay. Uh, I have four of them. 
I might want one from you. You might? I might. I might be able to part with one. Yeah. I do like a flame slash. Card's very good. Joe Joe in a good position with this uh with this dragon. Yeah, Eric just back up against the wall here. Urza Saga is gonna make another construct token before it goes away. There are ways to stabilize here. If you can make a big enough construct and put a shadow spear on it. Yeah, it's just start gaining life. Yes. Mr.'s research desk is gonna come into play here. So once Eric finishes uh, shuffling, he'll get a couple of cards exiled for the Exile with the what? Oh, with the research desk? Yeah, the research desk is going to exile the top, top, top couple cards of his library. Sorry, our uh, TO was making an announcement ah. and I was trying to listen to it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, those those research desks do have unearth as well. Yeah. Which is wild. Yeah. Draw lots of cards. Yeah, you can you can unearth those from your graveyard. Well, if he had a second red mana, he could double flame slash this uh, yep. Merktide region, and that would take care of it. That's really what he needs. He's got three flame slashes in exile. Uh, no, one of those is a seasoned pyromancer. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, it's be, it's sandwiched between. It. It's a pyromancer sandwich. It's a pyromancer sandwich. Yeah. Eric sort of in a tough spot. Yeah, I think a few turns ago, uh, when he was untapped, he should have capitalized on one of those um, demolition fields. Mm. So he could get a second red mana into play. Yeah. So is that is that flame slash staying in exile then? Does it get to does it get to cast it whenever now? Um Let me read the text on Mishra's research desk. Oh, we got a uh so Misha's research desk says, uh, sacrifice it, exile the top two cards, choose one we, of them until the end of your next turn. You may play that card. We're going to EOTFOF. Fact or fiction? Is that a bonfire of the it's damned? A bonfire of the damned. Uh, a couple of lands and a Magus of the moon. moon. I think... Uh, I don't know what that blue card is. Memory Deluge. Is that Memd Memdel? Man... Did he take the... He took the Magus? Uh, yeah. So... Something oh, it, that, it kills his saga. Something sagas. that Magus does is that it just makes it so Urza Saga is a blank. Yeah, you can't even play it. No. It dies. It would immediately die. Yep. Yeah, it turns off half of his game plan. And oh, and there's Just hard casting a Fury. Yeah, that's going to take care of the... Woof. Constructs, adding insult to injury. He'll pass back over to Eric. Eric is going to have a hard time getting out of this one. Why injure people if you can't insult them after? <laughs> That's all I like to do. Like, like to kick people and then make fun of them. Yeah, this is... <laughs> tap at the top of the deck. Tap at the top of the deck. Yeah, and that's going to do right. it for game one. So these players are going to get sideward, and we'll be right back with game two. Yeah, be Game two, these players are sideboarded, just getting ready here with our opening <laughs> hands. Looks like Eric is on a mulligan. Eric has opted to sideboard out three copies of Cleansing Wildfire. Okay. And brought in uh, two copies of Boil. Oh! And one copy of Brittle Effigy. Oh, Boil. Now that's a card. Yeah, it's going to be brutal if it gets to resolve and just d destroys all of loot, uh, yeah. Joe's lands. That's, yeah, that's rough. So and, uh, how is Joe sideboarded? Joe only boarded in two cards. He boarded in Test of Talents. Okay. And Alpine Moon. Okay. And he took out a Bonfire of the Damned and Phyrexian Metamorph. Interesting. Sort of interesting choices. I'm not sure what the aim of it really was. Well, the Metamorph can copy a One Ring. Yeah. That seems pretty good. It can copy, yeah. So these players have already got started here. Look, Eric led with a Den of the Bugbear and a Stone of Eric. That's the exact same thing he started with. No. And it uh, looks like Joe just has a Spire Bluff Canal and a Consider He's at the end consider. of Eric's turn. Flooded Strand going to the bin. Man, Joe is just so good with this deck. Like, watching him, like, make those plays, like... And there goes Stone of Eric exiling the graveyard. I don't know that I would have popped that just yet, but here we are. Um, I think you can be aggressive with it when you have four of them in your, in your deck. Oh, he has... Okay. Man, I am so used to Singleton sometimes. That, like, the the idea that you get more than one copy, I'm, like, popping off. I'm like, oh, a second copy of Versus Saga? How did they get away with it? 
Is that a ghost hoarder? It's a demolition field. Demo field. Okay. Yep. So looks like Joe is going to float a mana from the Spire Bluff Canal. Getting a, an island, yeah. Yeah, and then both players will get a search for basically. Yeah, it, it, it's sort of a sick card, especially if you have enough mana, because you just get to like, you get to blo take them off of some amount of, of dual colors, and then also fix your own like set yourself up with with some colored mana. I don't hate it as a color investment. I think it's it's actually pretty good, or as a mana investment, especially this early uh, doing the demo field. Like to oh, fix, that's to, what this that's what this deck does. Yeah. You, you want to get all those basic lands out of your opponent's deck, so that so that all of your demo fields and cleansing wildfires turn into strip mines. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, you want to be demo fielding them every turn. This is sort of a bad matchup for that specifically, because Joe has yeah, a, Joe Joe's has, only two color deck. Yeah, um, I I'm not sure exactly how many basics he's on. It's got to be like a half a dozen or more. If if he's playing against, if if Eric's playing against beans, he starts ruining their day right away. Right, because they're they're on like one copy of this shock and one copy of that and one copy of the triomes and I, I like it as a pincher approach too. Because he's gonna blood moon from one end. Yes. And from the other end, he's like, You better have basic lands in your right. deck. So if you're playing around Blood Moon, that means you're tutoring out all of your all of your basics. And if if you're doing that, then you're going to set yourself up for disaster. Let's look at the Urza Saga on Chapter 2 here. It looks like Eric is just going to make a Construct token. Totally reasonable. No no real pressure from Joe's side right now. Can't counter this. Joe does have a ton of cards in hand, though. I think it's, he's got six. He's gonna what pick is that? Four. That is a Brittle Effigy. So Brittle Effigy is a one-mana artifact. You can pay three, uh, four, four, tap, and sacrifice it to exile target permanent. Really? Yeah. That seems excellent. Man. That's, I mean... Oh, it's Exile Target Creature. Oh, I thought it was permanent. Oh, no. It's Looks just like a creature. dress down at the end of turn here for I mean, it, Joe. That's actually superb. That really cleanly deals with... I mean... Yeah, it kills a lot of Merc Tide Regent. Mm -hmm. Any any big threat. If your opponent wants to go all in on something, cool, we have an answer for it. Is that that's a dress down coming in? Yes. Just sort of cycling that. Flashed in a dress down at the yeah. end of the turn here. I don't think dress down is actually doing too much against Eric, so you might as well just cash it in for Yeah. He's he his Well actually that's not true. It does kill construct tokens. Oh that's true. Dress yeah, down, he dress killed down kills construct He killed tokens, the construct. So, yeah, that's gonna take care of that construct. And it's still in play on his turn. Because he played it on end step. On end step, yep. Here's a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. <sighs> that sucks, because now his 2 2 can't get treasure when it attacks. Oh. oh, wait! It's going away! <laughs> He's dressed back up. Yeah, dress down is a weird humility effect. Yeah, it's very good. That goblin put his pants back on. <laughs> oh, he stomped it. Bone Crusher Giant. Going to take care of the token, and Eric's still just stuck on two lands here. I think stomping the, that token is probably the best possible way to deal with it, because now you're not spending multiple resources to deal with yep. one card. That's always been the problem with Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Is like, yeah, Bone Crusher Giant an, is an okay answer. Yeah. The issue is that like you get two permanents immediately for one mm -hmm. thing. And Joe's just, I think he's just biding his time here. Yeah, Eric has no board presence to speak Yeah, of. and Joe has tons of cards in hand. Yeah. Tons of cards in hand, which means he has tons of answers. Yeah. That brittle effigy is just kind of sitting there. I don't I don't think that was a terrible hit, because, like, Eric has this, has this Bone Crusher Giant now he can deploy. Oh, it's a season. Here is a seasoned Pyromancer. What do you think he's seasoned with? Garlic? <laughs> uh, Paprika? Sulfur. Sulfur? Oh. <laughs> that tastes like burning. Eric's going to discard a couple of cards and draw a couple of cards. That does taste That'll like burning. That'll make two 1-1s one because I believe he discarded another copy of Season Pyromancer and yeah. Eric. Yeah. So non-lands, non-land discarded get you the get you the tokens. And there's an FOF. And EOT FOF. Fact of Fiction is bad. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, so we see 
Uh, Fury, Ottawar, uh, Scalding Tarn, Force of Negation, Unholy Heat. Oh, that Unholy Heat is sick. So just <laughs> Fury is going in a pile by itself, and Joe yeah. will add four cards to his grave. <laughs> Eric laughing. He's like, I know what you're taking. Like, I know you're taking the Fury. Fable of the Mirror Maker is going to get flipped over here, and... It, it was the choice, and it's 100% the correct if, choice, too. If, well, if this... Um, if Joe gets to untap with the Fable and the Fury in play at the same time, uh, Eric will likely never have a yes. creature ever again. So, uh, Fury is going to get cast here by Joe. It's going to take care of all of Eric's permanents. There's a Fury. Eric with a Fury of his own. Here's an Urza Saga. Finally getting that. The issue with Urza Saga is also that it like it doesn't do anything necessarily. A flame Slash to take care of the Fable. And here is three mana for a Bone Crusher. Giant. I like this. This is a good play. Yeah, I like the line. Um, saving that Fury in hand for potentially when he draws a fifth yep. card. Really really playing for the long game here. It also lets him, like, if he wants to make some sort of, like, weirder attacks and his opponent block with something big, he can kind of get in with the Fury afterwards mm, and deal with the, clean deal up, the final. Clean up yeah, the leftovers. I really like that. Little little Fury raid in the fridge. Oh, here Flame Slash going to take care of his Bone Crusher Giant. That's going to knock Joe down to 13. He does... Joe does have a... Uh, and a uh, Tiger Regent. Okay. Brittle, Brittle, Brittle Effigy, Effigy in Brittle play. Brittle Effigy is going to be able yep. to answer it, though. So We don't hate this. And is Murtad just always an 8-8 for Joe? Almost always. <laughs> it's a 7-7 it's a seven, seven right now. He he did have to exile a land. Oh, poor, poor Murtad. <coughs> Still going to be a three-turn clock no matter how you look at it. Could is that going to be it? Joe will pass back over to Eric. Eric's he could have copied it with the Kiki Jiki with a reflection to deal one extra point of damage. Because it would have come in as a 3 3. Sure. Yeah, just. And, and yeah, Eric is going to sacrifice the Brittle Effigy yes. to take care of the Merc Tide. Smart. We like that. Eric looking through his graveyard. He's got some seasoned pyromancers in there. He is he has some plays he can yeah, make. Yeah, this deck once you get to the later stage of the game, it has so much to do with its mana. Yeah, just like every turn, you can use all of your mana efficiently, and you know you never have to worry about um, your card economy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's not just in your hand. You're you're making you're making decisions in place from other places. Like you have graveyard interaction. Right. Um, you're obviously investing mana into your Urza sagas to, yep. to develop that, and a lot of it is uncounterable. Like yep. they can't counter. And then you have the these, saga. these equipments and artifacts that yeah. you can also spend additional mana on. Here is five mana, and it's going to be a, a Lorian reveal hard cast. So Joe's going to ancestral recall. <laughs> he didn't have enough cards in hand already, so. and he's just getting in with the with the goblin. Here is an Alpine Moon. I would imagine Maybe that's going to name her as a saga. Oh, God. It loses all abilities except for mana ability. If it, so it's, if it could, has it loses all abilities and it can tap for rainbow mana. Yes. Yeah. So I, in decks where you play Urza Saga in your own deck, you play this card to deal with your opponent's Urza Saga. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, or it doesn't, because it doesn't affect your own. Yeah. Yeah, so the saga going up to the third chapter uh, in the next upkeep here, that, that still gets a trigger, right? Because it adds the ability on as part of the saga's resolution. Nope, it dies. It dies to the Alpine Moon immediately? because yeah, it loses all abilities. It's still a saga. It has no oh, chapters. no. <laughs> it has zero chapters, has two chapter counters. It is a saga. It dies. Er, nair. Er, nair. Cleo. <laughs> <laughs> Here is the the singular copy of Cleansing Wildfire that's left, and he's got a common oh, here no. again. <laughs> what an absolute savage! <laughs> yeah, getting getting that common here twice is <laughs> unhinged. So he's he gets to he gets to find his his basic. That's still fine. <laughs> Get to back to back commandeers on the Cleansing Wildfire. So this, that does strip a card out of Eric's hand, right? Because, like, he's he's down the card. Yeah, and it didn't get to replace itself. Didn't get to replace itself. Joe got to just spend all of the resources that he has in the form of, of just, like, cards in hand. Where, like, Eric has all these cards in graveyard, cards on board that he can kind of spend mana on. Joe is just flush with cards in hand. Mm-hmm. 
It's so wild to see these two decks against each other. I really like this. This feels like the Wild West right now. And three mana. What are we doing? He's buying. Oh, he's buying Lutri. And he's playing the one ring. Oh, Eric, you got to read the one ring. Come on, man. We know what the red wing Come does. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. Come on. Uh, comedy. Just, just enjoy the slow death. <laughs> Sir, mm. can I please inform you? Yeah, that. And he draws a shadow spear off of the top, so what do we have in hand? Mm. I know he he's still got that fury in hand, right? Yeah, but he, he really wants the fifth mana. If he has the fifth mana, he gets to play it and keep it. Yep. It, it, the One Ring not doing a whole lot in terms of like. Protecting Joe, this it looks like we are going to evoke a fury, pitching a fury, just to deal with so that. That's going to take care of the reflection of Kiki Jiki. Interesting. Yeah, he J Eric may have another Urza Saga in hand. Head over to Joe. Just going to draw a card at the end of the turn with a one ring. He'll take a damage during his upkeep from the burden counter. It's at eleven now. He's about to have an ancestor recall. He just needs he needs a threat. Eric being at fourteen. Yep, he just needs a way to finish this game up. He has a Lutri in hand. And like that may be it. Yeah, just like uh bolt copy bolt, snapcaster bolt. I that's fine. Oh, it's just dash dash Ragavan. Yeah. We love that. Ragavan gonna come in the red zone here. That's going to exile the top card of Eric's library after he takes two damage. Joe, we're going to make a treasure token. What is it? Oh, no. Oh, it's the boil. It's a boil. Oh, it's the boil. Oh, Eric. <laughs> Joe refusing uh, to cast the boil. He has he has four lands, too. That's rough. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, now watch him draw the boil. Yeah, draw, draw the second. Just draw, draw the second. Oh, it's bull. Just, well, that is nice. Having the bolt is nice. He gets to bolt Ragavan in response to... Oh, that's very nice. Bray, Brazen Bar Brazen over in turn here. And three more mana. It is a Lutri. Just, just hard Lutri. Yep. Joe not going to have a hard time closing the game out now. This Lightning Bolt is going to get pointed probably at the Lutri. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The Lutri goes away. Joe will untap here. Imagine him commandeering that. Use, <laughs> oh, commandeering the Lightning Bolt brutal. back. <laughs> Lose two life from the burden counters. Joe's down to nine. Here is the Ragavan on dash once again. This is going to be a five. Yep. This is a three turn clock. Both creatures in the red zone. BB and Ragavan. Making a treasure. Top card of Eric's Love library. That. So Mishra's Reshers. 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 Would you like a nice Reshers? Reshers. Reshers. Mishra's research desk. Uh, looks like Joe not going to cast that one. I assume the younger version of Mishra, not the Fire Exine Mishra. His research is... And a Blood, blood Moon. moon. <laughs> what? Is that insult to injury? It does nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, Ursa Saga now double... Double double dead? Dead. That's a... That's an unholy heat. Eric sort of in a rough spot here. Gonna take two off of this ring. I don't. I don't think Joe's gonna have an issue now. It's just we're going through the, that boil. Here is a preordain. I don't know if the boil would have mattered. Like it would have slowed no. the game down and made it take forever. Yeah, Joe just he'd be able to draw out of it though. He's got this. Now oh, we got a ragavan. And once again, five damage. Nope, waiting. It is a unholy, unholy heat for Ragavan. Yeah. Like that. I don't know if I... Oh, what are we doing? We're just countering it. Counter it's hard counter. It's, it's on the mana counter magic. Yeah. Yeah, Joe has the ability to protect everything. Yep. He, is, he has reached uh, a critical mass. So. Yeah. Uh, another Mishra's research desk is going to get exiled to Ragavan it? here. Yep, it looks we're like casting. he is going to cast the research desk and crack it. Bubble the top two cards. It's an opt. Looks like an opt and a... Island. 
What island is that? It's the, oh, it's one of those um, Kamigawa. Kamigawa ones. Yeah. Now we're opting. I don't think that's an opt. That's opt. Or I don't think that's an island. Oh, is it? I think it's a, a mystical archive something. Oh, sure, probably. Yeah, you're right. I believe that's a mystical archive counter spell. And back over in Eric's turn, it's a he, boil. Has, he has drawn the boil. It's a boil. Do it. Just do it. He has drawn the boil, but unfortunately, uh, with lethal damage on the battlefield. <laughs> Joe has been boiled! <laughs> Notably, doesn't destroy his other lands because they are not islands, they are just mountains. Oh, because the Blood Moon is, is in play? Is in play. <laughs> what a match. Oh, oh, wow. Joe getting there in two. Yeah, yeah. I like this as a Lutri deck a lot. You know how... <sighs> Okay, so, uh, you know, a lot of times when you're brewing a deck, especially in a format like Modern where there's this tremendous card pool, mm -hmm. you you think about, uh, you know, cards that you need to answer things. Like, oh, I need to answer this deck, and I need to answer this card, and I need to answer this game situation. And, and uh, you know, when the card pool is as this large, uh, oftentimes you have multiple, multiple avenues. Yeah. Like, you're like, well, I could play Blood Moon, or I could play Alpine Moon, or I could play... Uh, boil. Yeah. yeah. With this is a Lutri deck, you're just going to play all of them. You have to. <laughs> Not just you, you don't have to pick. It's, it, you get to play all of the I, good cards. I sort of love that, though. Like, you get to just have a toolbox and also a playground. Yeah. It's it, it's very much just all of Joe's favorite cards. I think that, time. like, Magic should just be Singleton. Yeah. The Magic should just be Singleton. It's a Singleton game. We don't need four copies of anything. No. Every, every deck is Lutri. There's so many cards now. There's so many cards. <laughs> Land of War Elves and Elvish Mystic? Oh, you spoil me, sir. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for round three. That was a fun round to watch. And we'll be right back in just a little bit with round four. You're back. Love you.